In one year alone, credit cards accounted for almost £124 billion worth of spending in the UK. Everything from perfume and gifts to a meal in a restaurant are bought on credit. But how are these handy little rectangles put together? The life of the ordinary credit card starts in a facility like this in Slovakia. Its location isn't advertised to the public and security is high to deter criminals from coming and having a look around. Once inside, you'll find the design center. This is where new credit cards are born. With the color scheme approved, the paint must be mixed. For a small order, this is done by hand and the precise ingredients are also kept very secret. The staff will now load the printing presses with these laminated sheets. They form the basis for the front and backs of your credit card and the first color added to them is white. The freshly printed laminates emerge under the watchful eye of another security camera. The bosses are very keen that nothing goes missing from this factory. The next stage is the full color scheme the bank wants for its design. The colors are added to the rollers and a special device is used to spread the paint out to an even thickness. It's like a license to print money. This machine can print around 7,000 sheets of new cards every hour. However, the credit card companies have thought of clever ways to make sure the process can't be duplicated. Hidden in these genuine cards are plenty of security measures that make forgers' lives very difficult. The printing technique makes spotting a forgery relatively easy, like this UV imprint. When the cards are finished, the special mark will only show up under UV light. A new credit card consists of several elements. There's a protective sheet, the printed front and rears, and the high-tech magnetic strip for the back. But how does all this work to help you access money? Well, when you go shopping with your debit card, a very simple process occurs. You insert your card into the machine and a signal is sent to your bank. The bank checks the card is valid and that the account exists and has money in it. If all's well, a signal is sent back to the shop asking you to prove the card is yours. If you enter the correct PIN number, the bank will pay your bill for you and debit your account directly. However, if you use a credit card, the machine contacts the data office that collects requests for credit card transactions. The company's computer verifies the account is valid and that you haven't exceeded your limit and then releases the money if all's well. All of the necessary personal information is stored on your credit card in the magnetic strip on the back. This is the key to how a credit card works. These strips start out on a long reel, but they are combined with one of the protective sheets that make up the credit card. Experts analyze each sheet microscopically. Any with flawed elements are immediately rejected. The next stage is to combine the four different components to make the familiar plastic cards we all go shopping with. The sheets are carefully cleaned and layered into these steel presses which are placed into heavy duty copper caskets. The caskets are fed into a press that exerts a massive 120 tons of pressure at 150 degrees Celsius. At the other end of the press, each new sheet of 48 fresh credit cards emerges to be cut into shape. The guillotine also adds signature strips and the hologram to the cards, another of the many security measures designed to help keep your finances safe. In 2006, credit card fraud cost Britain almost £428 million. Cloning is one of the most common tricks for making a phony credit card and security experts spend hundreds of hours researching how the fraudsters do it. One popular method is attaching a phony card slot to the cash point. It's often accompanied by a camera that then records your PIN number as you enter it. Chip and pin technology has been introduced to combat fraud by using coded information on your credit card. A special drill is used to cut a hole in the pre-made credit card and the chip is inserted. 
The cards are then put through a rigorous exercise regime to make sure the chips won't pop out under too much stress. When they're fit, the cards are packaged up, counted and stored securely until the bank needs them. So is that it? Well, no. The next step is you apply for a new card or your old one gets stolen. When this happens, you call your card provider. They then call this company and a new card is issued for you. A fresh box of blank cards is opened and added to this machine. Its memory has been filled with your account details and those of many others, all of whom need new cards. This machine then imprints your name and details onto the front, whilst writing the account information onto the magnetic strip at the back. And it's ready to go. So, from a worthless piece of plastic to a valuable alternative to cash.